Okay, morning everyone. Welcome to block six. Thank you, Faith. Yeah, um, my God, it was just, looks like we started. Yeah, sometime. And this is the last block. I'll be missing you guys once you are gone, you know. But it's too early to say goodbye. We got the whole week and then we can wipe each other's tears, you know, but not now. It's just the morning, you know, but it's a bit early. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I can really see the spirit that all of you are holding and the commitment, yeah? Um, and I'm with you, yeah? When it comes to late evening, late night submission, <laughs> right? You would receive my email that, okay, you know, like yesterday, who was it? Um, I think it was Harry who submitted late evening. Yeah, like 7, 8 p.m. or something. I opened my laptop at 10, 10, 30 after my kiddo went to bed, worked for almost one and a half, two hours because I don't like pile of emails. I just couldn't work for a few, few days. And then there was like a lot of marking and piling up and back and forth. I don't like that thing, you know? But no, I can see the dedication that you guys are doing, doing the work with, and that's that's the spirit. Last unit, just work a bit harder, everyone. Yeah, if you wanted to earn the certificate, then you must. And like having come this far, why not? Yeah, having come this far. If we didn't have to, why would you spend five weeks yeah, this is the last week. We don't quit at this stage, whatever. And this week, I'm going to give you more time. Um, a unit 11, the first unit of the week, has very small PPT, a big learner guide for you guys to read, which I shared with everyone. Um, if Elizabeth or someone doesn't have it, please forward them to one another. Okay. Um, right. But the next unit, unit number 12, has only two assessment. Yeah, it's a bit of project writing. Uh, I think there is one video as well on top of my memory. But yeah, it's not that that hectic, you know, so you will have some time to catch up the work, okay? And if I'm giving you time this week, I wanted to see how much work is getting done, okay? I really want, like, I don't want to, like a weeping stick, but I need to know, you know, what's the usage of time that we are doing? Because once we are back home, back to our place, back to our routine, it's very hard and you will agree on that. Yeah, so we have to use this time, and especially if you are living in a hotel room, which I guess you are, if you are provided accommodation, most of you, then that's the golden opportunity, right? Slap it, okay, right. Um, okay. Um, Right, um, right. So name of the unit is Coordinate Business Operation Plan, BSB OPS 402. When it comes to plan, some of us are great, some of us are not. Anything that you do needs a strong planning, isn't it? The plan can be short term, the plan can be long term, the plan can be decades in advance. Short-term plan, you have to, you plan your day. What will I do during the day? And I have my planning, how I'll train today. Like PPT task one was my plan, which can shuffle a bit. Bit of contingency is required. Bit of extra planning is required. So I can cover everything within the time frame. Okay, right. I plan my week, unit 11 and 12. Bit of marking, bit of one-to-one -one session with everyone, every one of you, those who are struggling. Yeah. That's my week planning. Until the end of your planning, finish your marking, uploads your grade, signature, blah, blah, blah. Back on track with the second batch, third batch is starting, all that. That's my till end of year. What is my five years of planning? Become compliance manager, right? I opted my interest for that as well, right? Enough. I mean, training is good, but everyone you need to step up, isn't it? Yeah, go to the higher, higher possible places. That's how we strive. That's my bit of long-term plan. 20 years of plan, get retired with XYZ amount of money, which I'm not sharing with in a live channel, <laughs> right? But that's my planning, yeah? Have this many number of properties, have this much amount of stock in my bank balance, this much dollar, and that's it, the day I will achieve. I'll say thank you very much, APTC and everyone. It was wonderful working with you. Now it's me and my retirement. Yeah, it can come any any time, but 
I know my magic number. That's my long term planning. It can take decade or more, but that's a long term plan. Many companies have few decades of planning. Like I know one of the company, electricity provider AGL, they will have a plan up to 2050. They'll go carbon neutral because most of the energy produced in Australia are coal based, which has greenhouse emission and blah, 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 right? Heating their earth atmosphere and not meeting sustainability arcade. So they all have some target, 10, 10 20 years of target. I'm living in Queensland, Brisbane. Um, we are hosting Olympic in 2032, 10 years from now. The planning is on the way. Most of the rail structure will be changed, infrastructure, high-rise building, hotels, motel, everyone will have their planning. The council will have five years of planning, the government, small government body, right? We ourselves could have one or two years of planning. Yeah, everything needs a plan. You're talking about an operational plan. If you have to launch a new product, right? You need a planning, isn't it? You'll do research, first of all, if the product is good enough to go to the larger audience, right? Why would you select that product? What is your competitor doing? And what not other things, you know, a lot of other things, right? That's all require a lot of planning. But I just have to put in share the share. Yeah, everything needs a lot of planning, right? With your kids' education, we need planning. Kids' marriage, we need planning. If you want to be a grandfather, we need planning for that one as well. What gifts will you buy? Yeah, do you have money for that? Have you planned for it? All that small things. Yeah. And the most important thing is have you coordinate. If you are the only one, different story. But if you are coordinating with a range of stakeholders, we know who are stakeholders, yeah, the one you are liaising with, yeah, then how do you talk to them? From whom you will get approval for? All this is called coordinate operation plan. It's coordination of that plan. Starting from research, getting the approval, getting the resources, be it physical, financial, um, you know, human resources, right? Any equipment, IT, for example, yeah? All the knowledge, induction training that's required. You guys are in a training program right now, right? Why? Because your company, your management felt like, oh, if you have this training, that will be beneficial, obviously to you, but to them as well. And that's why you have time away from work. Yeah, some only chosen lucky candidates. So we're going to learn a bit about how do you coordinate business operation plan. Like I said, it's a very small PPT. As you can see, only 22 slides. Yeah, I have shared the learner's guide. I'm happy to share with anyone else required. So I got two versions of learner's guide, just a PDF and Word um, and the PPT. Okay, so what we will cover, so introduction to the operation plan, which I kind of covered. Yeah, Developing operation plan, what do you need to develop a good operation plan? Then you put them into action, you plan, you put them into action. Once they're into action, you monitor them, right? If they are on a track, because whatever you plan, let's say you your plan was, uh, you know, to increase the profit, then you monitor that. Have you increased your profit over a period of time? Isn't it? If you wanted to increase the sell, right? Are you increasing sell? If you wanted to launch a new product, have you launched it successfully? We need to monitor the performance of whatever you plan. And once you perform, I mean, you monitor, you evaluate it, whether you've done it or not. And if not, then what is it that can be done differently? What can be done differently? So you stay on a track. Like if I lose my day time, or if I have a lot of things, what I do, I have my planning, I'll cover it tonight. Yeah. And that way I'm on track of my marking without making so much delay, which I had some bad experience last year. Yeah, if you delay it so much, it doesn't result good. So I have my planning, that's my backup planning, contingency planning, yeah? Right, so what we covered in, in introduction is safety to the workplace, very essential. Safety doesn't necessarily mean the, the physical safety, it's also the mental safety. 
feeling secure. Yeah, not having over stress in your workplace. Where do you locate the business plan, coordinating the plan, consultation, effective communication and collaboration? Safety in a workplace. Of course, the laws I'll mention is all about Australian laws. Uh, I don't know about SI laws. You know? Federal and state, federal is the like country laws, you know, and state governments, work health and safety legislation impose obligation on businesses designed to keep workers safe while at work. It doesn't only means physical safety, mental as well. And to great extent is always a mental harm than a physical harm, isn't it? You feel stress at work, that's a mental safety issue. You are not safe enough. That doesn't mean we shouldn't work. <laughs> uh, we can act in any way like we like, you know, like we want to. That's not the case. We have to follow the pattern, but getting too much of work, if it compromises your family life, that's against WHS. Okay. What is safety obligations? Under WHS legislation, workplace must provide a safe workplace. Safe method to work, support rehabilitation and return to work of injured employee. If someone got injured, what is the support available if they want to come back to work? Concern with staff about work safety, provide the relevant training and appropriate supervision to the staff, cover the compensation insurance. Let's say if I injured myself while at work. Again, I'm not sure about SI rules, but in Australia, I should be compensated. If I have done all the right thing and still I hurt myself while I'm at work, then I can put a compensation claim. Protect workers from bullying or harassment, which we have seen in many of our units, how you can talk about or cover the employee to be safe at work. Remember that Anna's discrimination and uh, about the lesbian community and all that thing, yeah? Provide employee with mechanism to raise and discuss any issues without any fear. So where do you look at existing business plan? So this is a planning stage, right? All successful organizations create a series of plans to guide their future action. They will typically develop three levels of plan. Strategic, like very long-term plan, reviewed in a long term, right? If you wanted to be number one provider in Solomon, number one education provider in Solomon or across Pacific, that you don't monitor that every week, isn't it? <laughs> That's a very long-term plan. You can't say, oh, did I become number one? Or again, next week, oh, did I become number one? No, it doesn't happen. That's a very long-term plan. Even if you monitor, the result will be stay, still the same. It will only end up you getting some frustration. That's a long-term review planning. You review it after a few years. To support that, you develop some operation plan, which you review same length, but you review them more frequently. And based on the operation plan comes the team plan, right? If I have to um, become, like for example, APDC as the number one provider across Pacific, right? I got some operation plan. I'll assign tasks to all the different team. I will tell my uh, student enrollment team to choose the best student. I'll tell my support coordinator team to provide the best student support. I'll tell my facilitator and the trainer team that this is how you should train within this much of day. This is what should happen. There should be this many sessions and all that. Every stage of student journey, we need a planning. So that's various team planning. Okay, again, it's, uh, you know, monitored more frequently. Okay. Now we look at each of them, strategic plan. A strategic plan is designed to give broad workable statement of long-term direction of the business. The word is long-term. It is the foundation of the organization planning process. The plan involves setting goals and objective.
setting goals and objective, discussing strategy that will help in business to reach their overall target. Is ambitious and looks to the long term, usually covering a period of three to five years. Doesn't happen overnight. Like I said, becoming number one provider in Australia or across Pacific doesn't happen over time. Your writing and premium hi this is debbie narver and welcome to our first lesson in the introduction to strategic planning okay i'm just playing one video sorry if i haven't mentioned that <laughs> course our first lesson is what is strategic planning most people know that it's long-term planning but the proper process is less known which can lead to problems. So the areas we'll cover in this lesson include, first, what are the problems and causes of failure in strategic planning? And second, we will examine the criteria for effective strategic plans. So let's start by first looking at the problems with strategic planning. First of all, I find that it's often a misunderstood and misused tool. Most people have heard the term, Perhaps they've even participated in strategic planning workshops, but sometimes these strategic planning processes have devolved and morphed into something that isn't really strategic planning. And because it has been done that way in the past, everyone comes to accept these bad habits as the norm. Let's look at a couple of scenarios. In scenario one, our planning calendar says it's time to do our strategic plan. So let's invite all our stakeholders to a session and get it done. We will ask everyone what they think we should do for the next three to five years and write it on a flip chart. Once we are done, we will produce a nice report and give everyone a copy. In scenario two, let's hire a consultant to do our strategic plan. This person can go around asking everyone what they think we should do in the next three to five years. Then write up a really nice report that includes everyone's ideas and some appealing visuals. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that there's no value to either of these processes, but they certainly present some problems. Let's dig into that a bit. What are some things that can cause strategic plans to fail or not be as effective as they could be? First problem, there's no clear purpose. So how can you get results? In our scenarios, it was something that just needed to be done. Without purpose, it's difficult to get commitment or focus. People may go off in all directions. Second problem, the plan is not linked to vision and goals. So why are we doing it? This may seem obvious, but so often the vision and goals are not considered. The next and very common problem is basing the plan on opinions rather than based on real and objective information. So we end up with a plan that is not realistic or achievable. A solid plan takes research and time, which connects to the next problem, lack of a structured and systematic approach. Sometimes organizations want to rush through the process and don't want to commit the time and effort. Once again, this usually leads to a poor plan, even if it does have fancy graphics and a glossy cover. Another big problem is when it's not linked to action or implementation. So for example, who will do what? By when? What resources do we need? Without getting these things in the plan, it's not likely to get done. And plans are sometimes not aligned with the current reality, such as resources. So we may have some grand ideas, but we don't have the money or time. If it's not realistic, it won't be achieved. And finally, there may be no follow-up evaluation. The plan just sits on the shelf. A strategic plan should be a living document, which we continuously reference and modify as necessary to meet changing conditions. So now that we've looked at the problems and pitfalls, let's talk about the criteria for effective planning. Mainly, it needs to be based on best practices and it needs to be objective and achievable. Let's start by understanding what we mean by strategy. When a military general or a chess master talk about strategy, they are talking about the approach they use to win. It's not instructions for how they do their job or what others want them to do. It's the same in management. 
This definition from Essentials of Strategic Management by Hills and Jones describes it as a set of actions that managers take to increase their company's performance relative to rivals. So why is strategic planning important? First of all, consider how will we achieve our vision and mission? How can we be better than the competition? A strategic plan gives us the how. It creates focus because we can't be all things to everyone. Have you ever tried? It allows us to be proactive to avoid risk and leverage opportunity. It gives us a broad and long-term view and it guides operational decision-making, budgets, and priorities. Strategic planning is an, an important part of overall performance management. It is grounded in the vision, mission, and values of an organization, which are generally unchanging. The strategies define how we get there. And as the environment is usually changing around us, strategies need to change to adapt. The strategic plan then guides the operations. Where do we focus our resources? What do we need to achieve? It guides business unit plans and ultimately individual employee plans. When each employee's work is aligned with the strategy, the organization performs well, assuming that the strategy is good. It also helps with day-to-day -day decision making as managers and employees can assess which course of action is consistent with our strategy. Now I've seen all kinds of things listed as strategies. Often they are projects or tasks, not strategies. A strategy is a clear focused direction. Here are some examples. Lowest cost. Differentiation, which is what is unique and valuable to whom. A niche or focus, where we excel in a narrow market or a unique customer segment. Now these first three are generic strategies defined by expert Dr. Michael Porter. We'll learn more about these in future lectures. But also consider things like partnerships or collaboration, mergers and acquisitions, adding or removing lines of business, automation, early adopters such as first to market. See how each of these is a very clear but big picture direction. We don't get into projects and tasks until we have this big picture. So let's talk about what strategic planning is not. It's not a wish list, a to-do list, an audit, an operational plan, a project plan, or a policy. And while it should seem obvious, I've seen strategic plans that have morphed towards some of these things. Once again, I think it comes back to being clear on objectives. Otherwise, individuals can push it in different directions, either consciously or unconsciously. The primary objective is how to achieve our goals. So keep in mind, strategic plans should be big picture and long-term focused usually focus on a three to five year window, but that can vary depending on how much change is happening within our environment. Be aware of getting bogged down in the detail before having the big picture. So let's summarize what we've learned in this lesson. First of all, strategic plans provide focus. It helps guide decision-making, business unit, and employee performance plans. Strategic plans often fail when they don't use a structured and systematic approach, are not based on real and objective information, or don't link to implementation. Strategies define a set of actions, the how, to achieve superior performance and reach goals. Strategic plans should be big picture and long-term focused, not a to-do list. Thank you for joining me in this brief lesson. In future lessons, we'll delve into things such as plan your plan, setting up for success, gathering and analyzing information, evaluating options, and linking to action. So please contact me to learn more about this and other courses in applied management. Debbie at narvermanagement.ca Yes, that was a bit an overview about strategic planning. Yeah, uh, the PPT shared the link is inside yeah, if you wanted to revisit that page. Okay. Now let's talk about operation planning. I'm not going to play all the videos and that's why I said there is a lot to read. Yeah. So operation plan and how strategic goals and objective will be achieved. 
you have a bigger top plan how you achieve it is your operation plan and based on the operation plan comes the team plan right organization is usually have numerous operation plan that need to be implemented to achieve the longer strategic plan they explain how strategic will be put in place provide direction on strategic plan will be made by time frames and priorities and are also referred to by the other titles such as the action plan tactical plan or management plan next comes the team plan Team plan are developed by supervisors and frontline managers or team leaders. The team plan are based on how, based on and flow on the operation plan. Okay, they're based on operation plan. Like I said earlier, first thing comes your strategic planning. To support strategic planning, you need some operation planning, operation plan like agenda and one operation planning could have several teams planning yeah this is how how they how the whole structure goes they are implemented operation plan relevant to work for team by providing direction and focus on what needs to be done may contain messages again with individual team members performance will be monitored because it's a team-based plan so how you judge your team member Next comes important part is coordinating of operation plan. Need for coordination. You need to really identify and understand. Do I need to talk to someone or let someone getting involved while I'm dealing with this operation plan? If yes, then the coordination of plan is required. How you interact with others? Is it a meeting? Is it a remote session? Is it a face-to-face -face, um, collaboration, right? And how effectively you communicate that information? Is it from the starting, is it in midwill, or is it just towards the end that you just thought, okay, this is what we've done and this is how, you know, um, this is how things are happening. Okay. Just inform. The important part of any coordination, anything comes a consultation, right? Which refers to the people being involved in the workplace decision making through being made aware of an issue or a topic of discussion, asked to contribute to idea suggestions and participating in a discussion. Some benefit of consultation, they make employee feel more valued and respected. Brings a broader range of idea because you involve everyone. If I had to take all the decision on my own, then I'll have only some of the limited knowledge. But if I ask everyone that, hey, hey, sir, Frank, William, Charles, Johnson, Simon, Elizabeth, please, or oh, Faith, please tell me your, what you think of that. And then everyone says, okay, it's a good idea. Someone might put their hands up and say, no, it's a stupid idea, right? Because I'm getting involved in a consultation process. So I'll have broader range of the idea coming. Increase the legitimacy of the concept. People can often perceive an idea as legitimate or unfair if it is just one or two people have made a decision that affects everybody. You know, if I decide that how everyone should behave in my classroom, right, or how you should submit, that's a bit not fair. I have to involve everyone else's opinion as well. Yeah, that's a bit of consultation. Effective communication. One of the keys to a successful consultation is the communication. The more effective it is, the better it is. Regardless to whom you are speaking to, whether they are senior or a junior, it's important to treat others with respect. Learning to listen and give others time to talk and voice their opinion leads to respectful conversation. Having respectful conversation will lead to increased productivity, less conflict, fewer meeting and consultation. Another key part of effective communication is setting the boundaries around communication and respecting them. Just because I allow freedom doesn't mean that anyone can tell, talk to me in any ways. You know, we, should, we have to set the boundary, you know, that doesn't matter what happened, don't raise the voice. You shouldn't make others inferior, feel inferior. Yeah, like all that basic thing, like setting the ground rules, setting the boundary. 
It's a good practice to have protocol in place for asking and answering question, how long someone is permitted to speak and what are the conditions for con continuously interrupting others while speaking. I had some student in past, they were like very, um, very hard to handle. I had to tell them that, okay, thank you very much, but that's not how you should talk when there's like 50 plus people in the other classroom as well. Okay. And collaboration. That refers to at least two person working together. Like you guys can be discussing assessment task with one another. That's collaboration. Yeah. The key elements of effective collaboration are there must be having clear objective and direction. There has to be a genuine cooperation between those involved. There must be a timely. I mean, it's not like one person doing all the job and everyone else claimed to have done the job. It has, everyone should contribute. Yeah, needs to be interdependence on the task and there must be resilience on others to do what is expecting from them as needed and by the time they are required. Yeah, collaboration. It's very, very crucial, very important for the success of any, any operation plan. Sounds good? Okay. Yes. Let's take the break now. Let me pause the recording. Right, so welcome back to the second part of the session where we talk about developing operational plans. The so development, implementation, and coordination of the plan must be deliberate, pre-mediated, uh, and structured. At this point, you need to identify the focus of the plan. What is it that you are trying to achieve? Consult with the stakeholder to get their input. Identify the resource requirement. Prepare for the plan. Uh, plan for contingency. We all lake in this. We all greatly lake in this. Okay. Um, yeah, so we are talking about the focus on the operation plan. There has to be a direct link between the focus of a plan and one of the objective. If your focus is increase your sales, then whatever operation plan you might be designing should have a link to increase of sales. That's it. If there is not, then it's not useful. Yeah, it has to be, right? Example of possible focus on a plan. Operation plan focus of an area of operation, and this may include Staff of organization is development and downsizing. If you're, if one of your target is to cut the cost, then downsize your size, okay? The other thing is creating operational structure for the restructuring of the business. If you have so many admin staff, you know, then you are recruiting more and you feel like, oh, not everyone has enough work, then when your structure problem, you're not allowing them to have enough work distribution. Structure changes, yeah? Address the environmental tradition if sustainability is one of your aspect. Development of customer service standard, creation of or revision of policy procedure, or introduction or upgrade to system on technology used by the business. If you are still using the old system, old technology, like a lot of thing is, um, you know, getting updated these days. I recently upgraded my Grammarly, the one I was using, right, which is a premium version for me now. It keeps on telling me all the possible grammar fixes, not just the spelling, the grammar fix as well. It can um, set the tone of my writing using the technology. Of course, it's text detectable. So when I load my tax return, I can claim that I made this much of expense. So whatever my income tax bracket was, um, you know, my actual cost will be that much person less. Yeah. Like I said earlier, you can't tell the tax department that, oh, you are taking too much of tax. You have to be smart enough to take whatever you can take back, I mean, yeah. Okay, some resources, physical resources, all the machines that you need, space that you need, office structure, human resources, people like us, human resources, yeah. Financial resources, the biggest thing, the capital, yeah. Technological resources, all the IT, laptop, software that you need, an organization requirement or resources, whatever support you need from the organization. 
Yeah, it could be the policy procedure or their plan or template and all that. This is an example. Yeah, I mean, components of an operation plan, developing the operation plan. So what we got here, it should have some of the component, right? Like goal, performance objective, action, responsibility, resources, time frame, milestone, and KPI, key performance indicator, KPIs. The goal, identify in general terms what plan is seeking to achieve. Performance objective, spe specific aspect of it. Action or task, describe the action to be taken. Responsibility, we know what it is. Yeah. Resources, list any resources required. I mean, the more clear or the information you can provide, anyone reading the plan will be able to extract the same information that's in your brain. Okay, I got um, this thing here. Okay, can you guys see my sample operation plan? This one, can you see it? Yep, yeah. okay. Right, this is just a sample operation plan. This is not a legal requirement of the structure or the layer. Can you please, oh, thank you. Uh, you want me to zoom in? Sorry, Aspinji? Please, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. Awesome. Great. Okay, so there is no legal requirement for the structure or the layout, but just an indicate you for your purpose, yeah? Okay, uh, sustainability enhancement, that's the name. It should always start with a good name. The goal is to improve contribution of the business making to be more environmentally responsible. That's a goal. Like we saw here, what, what comes with it? The goal, the name and the goal, the performance objective. One, two, three, reduce the waste of landfill by 60% by so much time. It has to be smart. Remember smart? S-M-A-R-T, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time-based. Smart objective. If we just say reduce waste, like what do you mean by reduce waste? By how much percent? By when? Yeah? You have to be very specific. Reduce water usage. Again, if I simply say to reduce water, water usage, what does it mean? How much do you want to reduce? If you are not clear, who else can be clear about it? By 15%, you know, rather than the normal tap, you can use the sprinkler tap, right? Water tap. Sprinkler, something like this, yeah? So rather than the normal tap, if you use this one, it automatically reduce the amount of water that you use, that's it, right? And it doesn't cost a fortune, as you can see. It comes with an attachment. You can change everything or just the attachment, yeah? So that is this one, okay? To reduce electricity, how do you reduce the electricity? Maybe by installing solar, maybe by switching off the lights when not in use. Yeah, whatever section of the room you are using, just turn on the light for that one, not for the whole thing. Okay. Right, so these are the actions that you can take to reduce waste. Audit, first of all, you need to audit what is your waste. Introduce recycling points. I know there is something in so Solomon in the Honia report. Yeah, how many of you are aware of that recycling facility? You are aware? How many of you have used that? Yeah, you know, there are three types of bins. Yeah, one is the normal landfill bin, right? The other is a recycling bin, and third is a green bin. Yeah, so that's all about the base recycling points. Engage with supplier to reduce excess packaging. So when they are sending, I had to lodge one complaint to Amazon just for a small, tiny like this, they gave me like 10 times bigger box. I lodge a complaint straight away that are you not taking care of the environment? Why would you have to send me a, this big box for a tiny thing? Reduce your packaging, you know? Where is, because for them, it doesn't matter, but for us, it matters. 
right? And all these things, switch out to LED lights, you know, introduce water saving devices and all the equipment. Have sensor one, you know? Have you used one? Sen sensor, sensor water? Okay. Okay, so here we got some action item because to support your performance objective, like objective one, to reduce land fit, you will have to some action item. Then comes who is responsible by time, who is the human resource, financial resource, physical resources, how do you measure it, and what is your performance measure it? Yeah. Thank you, Asbin Shar. I should have thank you, not thanks you. But anyway, okay. So um, that's the sample operation plan, yeah? Thank you, thank you, that's good. Right, so back here, because I had to uh, talk about, there is a lot that goes in here. Of course, it's very short time I can talk about it, but the, the, the learner's guide is very, very full of resources, so much of information, please refer to that and you'll have some time, yeah? Um, okay, the next is resource requirement proposal. Again, you can refer to learner's guide for any sample, but it could be something like this, where you list all the resources and the responsible person. Yeah, how do you get it? A formal proposal must be prepared and submitted to the management requesting the resources have been identified as being required for the operation plan. So whatever you feel are, these are the eight years of Joe and Sam, but just because you have it on a paper, did you ask your HR manager about Joe and Sam's availability or workload? Just because you need thousand dollar doesn't mean you should have five hundred thousand dollar, isn't it? I might need one million, but does it does it mean I'll have it? No, I need to get an approval. I need to convince the person giving me the money that okay, this is the purpose. This is what it's going to serve, right? So for that, we need a proposal, resource requirement proposal. Right. So who should we submit that to? Submission is required to keep senior management in the loop. Allow senior management to oversee the use of a logo. If I say I need a car, you know, for the work purpose, I can't be saying I need a brand new car. They said, oh, okay, uh, you know, Harry was using once. I'll tell Harry to use other means. Now the shirt that belongs to you. That's it. Right. Oversee the use of the resources. Right? Enable management to integrate resource requirement and support management obligation to discharge due diligence in the management of the business. Okay. Right, that was topic two. Now, um, put operation plan into action. When the planning of operation plan has been completed, all the necessary approval have been obtained. The planning is done, approval has been taken care of, implementation of the operation plan can commence because you got the horses ready. Now you wanted to ensure that the horses are running, yeah? The key to this phase is the plan need to be implemented strictly in accordance with the plans that were made and approved. In this stage, you can expect to help with the recruiting onboarding, obtain the resources that were identified, act to ensure safe and efficient use of the resources, support the staff and manage contingency as they arise. If your staff falls in sick, what would you do? Yeah, I'm not sure how big is this video. Let me play it. Oh, it doesn't work like I don't know why it didn't work like that. That's like a big one. Okay, it's only six minutes. Let's just play it now. module will outline how to put all of the planning elements together into a functional operational plan. We'll discuss the various tools which will assist you to create, monitor, update, and manage the performance of the plan. So, how do we put all this together into a plan? First, divide and conquer. Develop the operational plan group by group. Start by defining the services provided by each group. At a high level, what does this group provide to their constituents, the organization, or their partners? Next, define the initiatives the group would like to undertake in the future. Again, at a high level, what would this group like to provide in the future? 
Okay, next we got monitor the performance of blood pressure plan. If you don't monitor them well, you'll it might be okay. So it, it's very tricky because if you monitor too early, you don't get the good result. If you monitor too late and the results are not on track, then it's too late to fix it. Yeah, things have slipped out of your hand. So you need to be very careful what time frame would you monitor them with. Yeah. Throughout the implementation of the plan, monitoring needs to occur to go and track the impact of this plan. And the systematic process involving collection of analysis and use of the information to track the plan's progress. The areas that were identified as important in the planning stage of the plan will focus on this page, where you will assemble the objective data, identify and consider performance outcome, whether you have really achieved those outcome or not, recognize and analyze unacceptable outcome, and respond to those outcomes. Let's look at that. Okay, so moving on to the last section. So that's about evaluation of performance of the operation plan. Upon completion, completion of the implemented plan, the final stage of the process is the need to review their implementation and the outcome achieved. Whether you achieved the real outcome or not, whatever you plan, right? During this stage, you may be involved in identifying areas of improvement. If you haven't achieved it, what is it that you need to improve? Preparing recommendation, presenting your recommendation to any nominated person, like board of director or super management, keeping performance record, reporting to the management, of the outcome of the, plan, of the plan. Let's watch this last video. Welcome. Hopefully, you have started learning about operations management and you have come to learn about how organizations enhance the performance of their operations. In this video, we will identify and discuss the performance objectives in operations management and how this impacts the operations of an organization. Welcome again to this video. In order to ensure that the operations of an organization run smoothly, clearly defined objectives must be set for the day-to-day -day running of the operations. This will enable the organization to satisfy their customers and enhance their competitiveness within the market. These objectives are what we refer to as operations management objectives and there are five of them. Let's go through them one after the other. The first performance objective is cost. Cost refers to the prices of goods and services and the operations cost of production. When the cost of the operations used in producing or rendering goods and services is high, this will affect the prices of the product produced and the profit gained by the organization. This is also the case when the cost of the operations is low. If selling cheap or affordable products is an organization's priority, cost will be set as the operations performance objective for the organization's transformation processes. The second performance objective that an organization could set is speed. Speed refers to the turnaround time from a customer placing an order to the point of delivery. Put another way, Operation speed refer to faster delivery of goods and services. This is very important in any. Anyone? Simon, sir, all good? Well, um, this is it. 